Tabitha A. Urich graduated from Virginia Commonwealth University in 1989 with a bachelor's degree in health and physical education. Dr. Urich taught in public education and at Temple University before accepting a position at Towson University in 2002 as a member of the Department of Kinesiology. These are her reflections. Dr. Urich, thanks for sharing with us your career in education. You are helping us enrich our understanding of teacher education across time, and um, that is a very important piece, particularly because you come from physical education and we need to have that program represented. I think a good place to begin is in the beginning. So would you tell us a little bit about your early social context, where you grew up, what you were thinking about while you were going through school, about a possible career or college or whatever? Okay. Um, well, um, that, that's, um, that's a great place to start. I, um, I'm kind of the accidental teacher, <laughs> and I think it, in, re in retrospect, it's, it's always been meant to be. For as long as I can remember, I knew that I would need to have a career, uh -huh. uh, that I would I'd come from a blue-collar background, so um, work is expected, and I knew I would be going to college, so that was never a question. What um, did become the question is where, and that unfolded as I was having my 15 minutes of small town fame as a field hockey player. Ah. So my um, parents were gracious in, in, in retrospect because they allowed me to pick my college for the field hockey team, the uh -huh. coaching, and whatnot. So um, I wanted to go somewhere else. I was from a very rural community near um, the Amish country in, in Hershey, Pennsylvania. And so I wanted to experience something different. And Virginia Commonwealth in Richmond, Virginia m met that goal as well as um, the type of program I, where I wanted to play. I felt like I could, I could make a difference there. So um, at that time, I thought I might major in nutrition. Mm -hmm. And all the schools that I visited on my official NCAA visits had that major except for the school I chose where I went to play field <laughs> hockey. So I didn't want to go to college um, without a major and without some focus so I picked the backup plan physical education mm -hmm. and um, jumped right in. I was a member of the majors club and secretary by November of freshman year and um, the irony that I, I always think about is well NCAA makes you pick a major mm. and field hockey isn't one. Uh -huh. <laughs> so um, so, so physical education was a good fit. And I felt that that was a job that I could perform and I could find happiness and I knew from, from, uh, the, from growing up that you could, you could support yourself with that. Uh -huh. so, so that was um, just um, an easy decision, but I wasn't sure that's what I wanted to do. Right. So I changed my major at least two times and, and I always came back to physical education. Uh -huh. um, can you tell us a little bit about the, that program? Do you remember? And really, I'm just thinking this in sort of in contrast or comparison to what you now do in your position. Right. Well, fortunately, what I didn't know at the time is that Virginia had a dual uh, licensure where the um, certification to teach K through 12 physical education required also health. So. Oh. Interestingly, Pennsylvania also does the same, mm. unlike Maryland where you can get a degree and a license um, for K-12 physical education absent of health. So that was fortuitous. I could not have predicted that I would need that, but that worked out well for me. So the program was health and physical education, K-12. through um, It was, um, as having taught the history of and philosophy of physical education here at Towson, um, in, re in, in recollection, it was very much like all the programs were back then. A lot of half credit activity classes where you uh, perform the sport, the skills for the sport, the strategy if it was a sport, um, and then you practice teaching it, and usually uh, among your peers. And um, um, the, the 
the program um, seemingly had a good reputation mm -hmm. when I went to the, the state association, the state convention every year. Um, but I, I was less concerned about that mm -hmm. because I was in good company. There, it was not a program that was, um, uh, we, we worried if we would have professors next year if it was going to stay or not. I say mm -hmm. that because last year the program closed. Uh -huh. So that's unfortunate yeah. you need to see your, your, your program where you graduated from closed down. But I, I have no idea what the mm -hmm. reason for that is. Mm -hmm. um, so um, the did you have an opportunity to go into schools regularly, not just for, I assume you did some kind of student teaching like experience, mm -hmm. but in addition to that or before that? Yes. Um, we had required internship hours ah. at an elementary school that was assigned to us. Mm -hmm. I don't remember filling out a form or anything like mm -hmm. our students do now. But uh, we, we, filled, we, we were assigned to school. You went to that school, you were expected to observe, help, mimic at, at, at some point, and then and to teach a lesson. And I don't recall having to write my own lesson plan, let alone do it again and again like some of our students do now. But that probably would have been a good thing back then. Mm. Um, then we repeated that at, at the secondary level. I was assigned to a high school. Um, it, it was a program that uh, very much looked like the one I had come from, so okay. that was comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, the elementary program, in fact, I remember two internships for the elementary experience, and I don't know if that's because together they equaled the hours for the high school. I, I don't uh. recall that. The only thing that was interesting is that we did not have an internship for the health education part of our degree all until we student taught. Uh -huh. And then if your mentor teacher um, was assigned health, you taught health. Otherwise, you could leave that program without having ever experienced K through 12 health mm -hmm. in the classroom, which probably wasn't a good thing, but I did have that experience when I went to student teach. The student teaching experience was just like it is here for the physical education major. We had eight weeks in an elementary school and then eight weeks in a secondary school. And I, um, I remember that much, much better and the detail was much richer in my mind than from the smaller internships. Sure. But um, yeah, that, that I cannot imagine what it could possibly be like to go into a classroom and teach having never had that schema in your head for what it looks like, what it should look like, and having that day-to-day -day direction about um, what we do and what we don't do. You know, we, yes. we have a lot of knowledge, just all of us, whether we're teachers or not, from, from those 12, 13 years of sitting and watching as a student, but it's just so different from the other side of the desk. Indeed it is. Yes. And that's hard to describe, much less get somebody to understand. Mm -hmm. So we move into student teaching. Tell us about that experience. Well, um, I was assigned a high school to a mentor teacher who taught driver ed all day. Interesting. Yes, and that was not revealed or found out until about August before I, I started that oh, fall. No. So I got assigned um, to Jim <laughs> Vega at Swift Creek Middle School. Um, I felt a little bad for Jim because at that time um, all of the male phys ed teachers had their office in the locker room, the boys' locker room uh -huh. and the girls. So I had, they gave me a desk in the girls' locker room, but I really <laughs> needed to be with Jim kind of reflecting on. So they put butcher paper up on the walls or the, the glass windows of the office. <laughs> so that, that was a problem for them to be able to observe and keep an eye on the kids. But Swift Creek Middle School has great students, so that was never a problem. And then, um, so how long, d I mean, did you teach driver's ed? No, no, no. I was, I, they, they moved me. Oh, so okay. I was assigned to a woman at a high school, I don't know what's high school, but then um, because I never even pursued the driver ed certificate, which was an add-on, kind of like athletic training was at that time. Huh. You know, everybody majored in phys ed, the department was physical education, health was in there, there was some driver ed, there was always athletic training as an add-on certificate, and now they're all majors uh -huh. by themselves, except for driver ed. I don't know how that fits in any longer. But anyway, um, yeah, I was there, Jim taught um, most, uh, I don't remember how his schedule was. I know I was in a, in a trailer, 
teaching health. I remember it was eighth graders. I, I remember um, finding that unique because I, when I did frame myself as teacher, uh, it was always in the physical education environment. So uh -huh. what's interesting is that's the flip of what every other teacher would say because most teachers are in a classroom where everybody's sitting and <coughs> right. doing you know, um, sedentary work. So that was interesting. Um, uh, I was there eight weeks. I taught field hockey for a unit that was wonderful for me because uh -huh. it was comfortable. Uh -huh. I don't really remember what else I taught. I remember being nervous having to do the warm up, the group warm up of all of the classes before they separated with their teacher. And it was uh, it was the high time for aerobics. It was the 1980s. Ah. And I have no rhythm. My dancing is, is difficult for me. So it was, <laughs> it was, I was very nervous about that. But the more significant experience for me was the next eight weeks where I went to Swift Creek Elementary School, which was right down the road. And some of the students who I taught um, at the uh, middle school had little brothers and sisters at uh -huh. the elementary school. Another wonderful situation. I was, I was flattered to work with Marsha Little. She was my mentor teacher. And <clears throat> flattered and yet very challenged. And that is because Martha, uh, excuse me, Marsha Little had done her graduate work for a master's with Kate Barrett at University of North Carolina Greensboro and Kate Barrett had brought a, and, and, and is known for bringing this movement education approach to the United States. And that curricular model, which is what it is now, was not taught at VCU. Huh. So she was aware that I did not have that background and that the background I had had in preparation was very, um, very, mm, disjointed mm -hmm. in terms of what the expectations are from any kind of, uh, from any of the learning domains. So it was structured, she provided as much education as she could, but it was brand new and I had no schema in my head for what this physical education should look like. And it didn't even always sound right because <laughs> she expected the students to at times be quiet because uh -huh. they were to be cognitively engaged in practicing this psychomotor skill. And my point of reference was games, play, enjoyment, fun. Uh -huh. So that was challenging, um, but uh, she, she, she was a good mentor and really um, I'm so gracious for that experience because without it, I'm not sure I would be able to do what I do now as effectively. Because mm. I probably would not have ever moved into that type of teaching and that is that is the the, the d direction we're going in terms of skillful competence rather Isn't than that interesting. gameplay. Yeah, so I was so really you, lucky. Yeah, you were ahead of the game actually. Yes. Yeah, so I did something really odd and strange and perhaps stupid. Um, the, <laughs> the principal called me from Swift Creek Middle uh -huh. as I was completing my elementary uh, last few weeks and offered me a job and I said no. Mm. I was going to graduate school because um, in the course of me figuring out what I wanted to do, I always turned away from teaching and I wanted to study exercise physiology. I see. So I had taken my GREs that summer, applied to Florida State. Uh, my parents had moved to Florida from uh -huh. Pennsylvania uh, a few years before, so uh, my father had, had played football at Florida State, so that was kind uh. of one thing <laughs> I always wanted to do is, is go there. So I enrolled in January and Loved the information, loved the coursework, the theoretical part, but the lab work, um, collecting air in these big canvas Douglas bags that had holes in, in them that were duct taped, was a really unnerving experience, and I realized I'm stuck in this lab. It's beautiful outside. Um, this isn't going to be a good fit. Uh huh. So <clears throat> a friend called from back home in Pennsylvania and said, hey, we're building another, another elementary school in, in the school district where uh -huh. I actually went myself. Are, are you interested? We'll need a, a phys ed teacher. And I said, yes. So I, I applied for that job and I got it. So I, I, I packed up the car, said goodbye to the few people I had met while uh -huh. I was in Florida State and, and became an elementary physical education teacher. In Pennsylvania. In Pennsylvania, yep. Yes. Um, uh, and that was an amazing experience. I had a great deal to learn. I had a great deal of maturing to do. Um, but it afforded me a lot of opportunities. I was, I was surrounded by good quality people who were either still teaching or recently retired mm -hmm. or in the course of as I was um, learning how to, to do this, 
this teaching thing. And I also had the opportunity to coach and, and um, share my enthusiasm for sport that, in that mm -hmm. way. Um, so, yeah, so I thought I'd stay there two or three years, get my master's, and uh -huh. maybe, maybe go on. I kind of uh, at some point decided maybe being a professor and um, teaching at this level might be a good fit for me. So mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't leave. I stayed for 11 years. Yeah. Um, and what kinds of things did you do? As uh, teacher? Yes. I tried to do everything. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to do everything. Um, and what does everything include? Well... Um, my, the first year, uh, in terms of field hockey, the varsity field hockey coach, who was my high school coach, and I, we started a Falcon Youth Field Hockey Program. Uh, it was for girls in grades three, four, five, and six. Uh -huh. So we felt that if um, these girls had this unique experience to play high school field hockey, they should maybe have a little bit more than that unit in middle school in uh -huh. seventh or eighth grade prior to trying out for the team. So we started that, and that is, um, according to what, I, what I've what i heard, it's still, it's still going. Hmm. So, so that's neat. Um, in addition, um, a unique opportunity that um, really, really gave me a lot of different insight to, to the learning experience for the students was this. We had a cohort of children who were getting to and they, they were going into first grade, but by first grade they were um, they were they were not on reading le uh -huh. gr grade level for uh -huh. reading, and then of course that affected second grade and third grade and on up. And what the teachers, I, I guess I don't know if they had read the research or if they had just noticed this trend, but those students year after year were the students who didn't know um, their middle name, their address, their phone number, um, maybe what their parents did for a living. Um, those kind of th basic things. And then that went along with they didn't know letter recognition, they didn't know uh, what the sound of a letter made, let alone be able to kind of put all that together. So, uh, I don't know who decided this, but it, it was decided that um, a learning support teacher who worked out of the guidance office, a, uh, what would have been a special ed teacher at that, at that time, the speech teacher, we're going to do some intensive work over the lunch hour for this cohort as soon as first grade started the, 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 in the next uh -huh. academic year. And they were going to be the kids who didn't know the information I had just mentioned. They wanted me. And I was going to be the fourth person. And I think they really just knew that these kids also happened to be the itchy movers, mm -hmm. movers and shakers. And so if I could just kind of provide an outlet so that they sit when they're trying to do some speech and, and letter recognition and, and whatnot. So I said yes. And the cohort was created. The, the hour in addition to uh, the rest of the academic day for these children was, was planned. And children were put into smaller groups. So they rotated from one person to another, mm -hmm. 15 or 20 minutes. And I, I don't know how many days a week this was. Maybe it was at least twice a week, perhaps more. So knowing how uh, kindergarten, first grade students are, I knew that I was going to need more than one activity. You know, Certainly. Older children, you know, 15 minutes, one game, that would yeah. be fine. So um, I had had a few games uh, that, wet, that involved some um, interdisciplinary with reading literacy, and I, I went through all of them within about the first 10 minutes of the first <laughs> day we did this. And I thought, wow, okay, I'm going to need some more activities. Uh-huh. And we know that we can repeat them, we can change the name, and the kids don't realize that. So <laughs> that, was, that was doable. So I, I modified some of the other activities that I did with children for the psychomotor skill purpose. I modified them to address literacy as best I could. And then at some point, um, it became evident that I still didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> While I was perhaps giving the kids an outlet for their um, itchy need to move, and that was helpful. I didn't feel like I had any um, knowledge if I was helping them uh -huh. to become more literate. Right. And so I started spending more and more time talking to some of my colleagues about how it is we learn to read. Uh -huh. In general, I don't need to know that information. Right. And even though there was a reading in the content area course required of every major at that uh -huh. time, and now it's six credits, not just three, it, it did not it did not go to the level of detail for, for my needs. So 
Um, I learned how it is that we um, need to recognize letters, know more importantly the sound they make, the ability to blend them. Simple sentences are easier to comprehend because of how long it takes to get to the end. And, and then it became apparent, wow, this is really hard. <laughs> and it's really hard because what this little boy knows is different when this little girl knows. And this is just five of them. Uh -huh. What if I was a first grade teacher and I had, a, I had 20, 25? Mm -hmm. So I really tried to embrace the importance because while I feel that physical education is important and that if our bodies are not healthy, we really can't do what we love or what we need to do. But we can't do a whole lot of things either if we can't read. So um, I, that gave me a, a venue for learning in a different kind of way. But I, I still, um, well, I don't, I don't know what I was going to say, but I still. But uh, yeah, so, so that, was, that was part of what I did. An extension from that was a decision to continue over the summer months for some of these same children. Uh -huh. So I was invited to be a part of that again, and it was more of a day camp-like experience uh -huh. at the school. So I was doing a lot more um, gross motor activities outside uh -huh. in addition to whatever I could get the children to do um, in terms of literacy. So that was, that was, that was a unique experience. Um, we uh, also, a different cohort of colleagues at the same school recognized that some of our children were coming from um, other places with um, English as a second language. Mm -hmm. Their parents, um, if, if they liked school, if they had good quality experiences, were unable to really communicate about the needs of their student because they didn't speak English. Mm -hmm. So they were very much marginalized in, in our school. So we decided that maybe what we could do is create a camp over the summer for these kids. It would give them a safe place to go and it would provide unique fun experiences so that these children had a good a belief about school and a comfort uh -huh. there. Mm -hmm. So the camp was only open to certain children for that for that purpose and that was really really um, a tough thing to do. There, there weren't a lot of uh, colleagues other than the ones who believed in this and helped start this. There weren't a lot of folks who really wanted to invest in that. That was, uh. that was very challenging. But the local college had just started a new major I think it was dual special education L-Ed, and they needed an internship for these students to get them through in four years. So we had some of the local college kids helping us out. That very nice. That worked out well. That did work out well, yeah. But it was very draining. So we, that was, a one, unfortunately, one summer and, and done. Mm -hmm. but, um, did you ever get any feedback going back to when you started this interest in literacy and people came to you with the first grade level? students, and I think you said there were five. Did you ever get feedback on whether um, their reading skills had improved? Um, I mean, anything. I, I mean, this that. could be teacher observation. It didn't have to be some kind of standardized right. assessment or anything. Um, I don't recall that, and I don't know if that's because that information was provided to me, and I just said, okay, that's great, and moved on, uh -huh. or if I didn't have the thought process to ask. Uh -huh. I, really, I really don't know. Uh -huh. That's a great question. So you've now sort of meandered into, found yourself doing literacy and English as a second language. So this sort of physical ed focus has really broadened itself. It has, it has really broadened itself. And um, at some point I realized I had this whole um, package of games and you know, at, at some point when you're, when you're teaching, um, the lesson plans are written, but what is created and, and modified and improved isn't always written down, so it's in right. my head. And I thought, wow, I have all these things in my head, and I had to make them because there wasn't anything out there for it. So a colleague and I got together, we wrote a book. I thought, if I'm ever going to write a book, and it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't on the bucket list, but if I'm ever going to do that. Now, this was still when you were in Hershey? Uh, yes. You wow. know Hershey. I was, yes, I was in, in Cornwall, Lebanon School District. So, yeah, so we did that. Um, and And... And tell, so what did the book, the what book, was the book about? The book is Simon Says Reading is Fun, and it's <laughs> movement-based um, activities to um, increase, increase reading skills. Uh -huh. So it gave a little bit of background about uh, bare bones, w what is needed for a physical educator approaching how to learn how to read in uh -huh. a, a movement-based uh, um, activity um, environment. And then 
most of the book is, is the games and explaining mm -hmm. them. It's, it's a little rough around the edges, but it's, it's done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and have it for so, the rest of my life. So, um, you're having a good time. You do this for I had good almost friends, a decade, a, good more than company. a decade. Yes, I did. Um, and but while uh, uh, while I was there, and and um, feel felt like I was I was making a difference. Uh, an overarching nagging issue for me was what is what is the purpose of what I'm hired to do, which is physical education, and <clears throat> that's interesting because at first glance it is so obvious, and yet. I felt that the expectations were uh, a kitchen sink approach, and and the NAS the NASB standards hadn't even come out yet. When they did come out, or were available at that time before the internet and uh, and ease of availability, um, they 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 were the kitchen sink, and they and they still are. When I say the kitchen sink, they address the psychomotor domain, the cognitive domain, the affective domain, and then and then fitness, which sometimes is the fourth expectation while not a learning domain and sometimes it just falls under the psychomotor learning domain but um, I felt that at times my students needed focus in the affective domain whether it's about sportsmanship or just simple civility because sportsmanship is just really civility in, in a sport environment um, and I thought wow well if I focus on that um, what am I neglecting and and at what expense? And the next piece is, are we all doing that? And should we? I mean, is the librarian These are doing good this? Questions. Is the music teacher doing this? Is yep. the fourth grade teacher doing this? And it became apparent to me that somebody needed to because what might have been happening um, in the home, in another generation, or at church, or in the community somehow, um, this was a need. But at the same time, I was not sure if I should be providing this fun environment so that the children loved the activity so much they want to do it for the rest of their life and 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 yes that's that's definite uh, uh, definitely a piece of that because hopefully they will be lifelong movers for a healthful outcome but 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 enjoyment is 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 what drives that and so i i guess i thought that the answer was out there and i just missed it as an undergrad mm -hmm. And having gotten my master's in health education, there was no opportunity to get that. So um, curiosity and wonder is, is, is a strength of mine. So I, I felt that the answer must be there. And you don't want to reveal you don't know something. Uh -huh. So I just figured if I took the coursework, I'd have the aha moment personally and to myself. And I'd, I'd, that would provide focus and clarity about what is, what is the purpose of. And, and it did not happen. And in... in in reflection, it wasn't there to be made. It's it's here now. Mm -hmm. it, it is here now, and it's it's about competence and, and confidence and competence and skillfulness. Because if you don't have just good enough skill, you're not going to be confident. So you're not going to play golf or soccer or bowl or mm -hmm. do these things. Mm -hmm. And and generally, we do things that we're we're at least just good enough, mm -hmm. or that we're good at. And so um, it's become really apparent that the competence and skill must be the focus of physical education. So that's exciting because while I don't have K-5 to students that I can directly um, impact, I have much more than that because if every student of mine in my methods class, in my elementary methods class for physical education that I teach now, if every, every one of those 20 students goes out and has 500 students at their elementary school, it's multiplied. Right. Changing their schema from what they've had Mm -hmm. to do something different, like I had to do with my mentor, Marsha Little, is, is the challenge. Mm -hmm. Because what they experienced is not what, what is needed. So, Tab, is that what sort of made you decide to pursue an advanced degree and come into higher ed? Was this, this wanting to reach a larger number of people who then could do what you were beginning to I'd believe like to was necessary. That. I'd like to say that because it sounds really good and altruistic, but no. I had had the, the thought of um, maybe being a professor uh -huh. um, back when I was leaving college and doing the exercise physiology right. moment in time. Um, I was also um, 
a little itchy to do something different. And sure. different often for a teacher is, is satisfying by going into administration uh -huh. or perhaps a different content area. And I didn't have that interest at all. Mm -hmm. So um, this was um, financially different because if I had gone into administration, I could have continued adding to my retirement kitty. Mm -hmm. I had to freeze that, leave, and, and in essence start over. Uh, so, but, but I'm still in this movement-based discipline and, and that's, that's a world that apparently I'm, I'm going to just continue to prosper in because I keep finding myself back here. Uh -huh. It's meant to be. <laughs> yes. So, so no, I didn't, I didn't do it so that I could reach more people, but it has become apparent that I get to do that uh -huh. as a result of finding that personal answer to what is really the purpose here. And so what doctoral program did you pursue? Well, not knowing if I was smart enough or had the, uh, the ability to do it, I wanted to find a program where I could keep my, my day job. Uh -huh. I, uh, we had, um, um, uh, I had a great school. I had a great um, group of folks to work with. So I drove two hours to Temple University where they had a um, doctoral program in physical education. Uh -huh. And that's what I um, did. So I was, I was doing um, coursework fall, spring, summer while teaching. I was still um, coaching part-time at the local college and um, thought, you know, I, I'm due for sabbatical. I've never had one. So uh -huh. I took a year sabbatical to mm -hmm. finish the coursework. And I figured I would come back then and, and hopefully use my students or a colleague's students for whatever research I would end up doing for my dissertation. So when I was at Temple in my year sabbatical, I had heard that the um, interviews were rather demanding for higher education, uh -huh. that it could be a day, it could be two days. And I thought, wow, I've only really had one professional interview, and I got that job, so <laughs> I probably should have some practice. So I saw the job at Towson um, and thought, well, it says ABD, uh -huh. I'm not there yet, but well, I'll just put my materials in. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they were interested. and, and um, so I had the opportunity to have the experience of this interview, and then I got the job, and I thought, this is it. This is, <laughs> this is my chance. I don't know if this will happen again, so I, I, I took the job, and I never went back to my elementary school. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I've, I've been really lucky. And I, I wanted to be in a more metropolitan area, uh -huh. um, and so, so this has been a good fit, very good fit. So when you were offered the position and you took it. What kinds of responsibilities did you have when you first came? Well, um, I taught um, the elementary and early childhood majors at that time still had to take a, a credit or two or three of physical education. Uh -huh. So I, I taught them. I taught the introduction to physical education course for the phys ed majors, of how we do it here at Towson as well as here's the bigger picture within um, this movement-based discipline and then within um, against and up against athletics, coaching, the sport world and um, <coughs> wellness. And then the, uh, the field court two class which is um, comprised of ultimate frisbee, floor hockey, field hockey and lacrosse. So that was a great fit and I had, I had taught that a field hockey lesson when I was here for my interview in that field court two class. So that was that was a great fit. And the the program had just opt, um, adopted the tactical approach to teaching sport, which is just so simple and yet so beautiful. I I, I really think it's it's um, the way to teach of all of the curricular models that you could you could adopt. Because what we as athletes and and, and enthusiasts know is some of the very basic things tactically that you do in in soccer you can use them in basketball flag football rugby field hockey all the other invasion games and if we could tell our students that secret we'd have so many more people knowledgeable about oh oh the only thing that really changes is the the three or four skills that are needed so if you can give the competence and skills teach about that little secret of once you know how to mark, you can always mark or defend. Um, <clears throat> we might have more people who are enjoying mm -hmm. feeling competent and wanting to be physically active rather than join the fitness center, run on a treadmill, three or four months burn out, and then languish and taking right. care of themselves. 
yeah, so that's what I did. And the charge for me personally, professionally, was to finish my dissertation. Absolutely. Yes, and that was quite challenging because um, what, it's, what has become apparent to me that I can say now is I, I am a teacher. That is what I do. And it is really hard to cut your students off because it's time to go so I can go upstairs and work on the research or the dissertation mm -hmm. when they're, they're here because this is an institution to learn and that's what they expect us to be able to do is to be there for them. Mm -hmm. and our, our, our students, our, what's the word I want, consumer, um, doesn't, doesn't understand or care about all the other expectations. They're paying for our expertise so it's hard to say no to that. Mm -hmm. you, you, it is. It really is. And, um, you know, some students really are curious and you want to be there for those kids, mm -hmm. not the kids who are too, too unmotivated to pursue finding out answers to them for themselves. So that was difficult that to, was, that was challenging. to be able to, to be that kind of teacher, yes. which clearly you want to be. Right. And at the same time, take care of this other business right. that probably was important for you to remain a teacher. Exactly. And be who you wanted to be as a teacher. And having had that 11 years experience, I thought, you know, if I do a really good job planning and teaching these courses with the, with the kind of knowledge I was going to be doing it again in the spring, I will have less work to do in the spring. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have the three-year the, the, everybody knows, as a, 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 well, teachers know that you know you plan the first time, and then you have to tweak it the second time, mm -hmm. and there's a little more tweaking the third time. Mm -hmm. So everything takes three times, even if it's just a rubric for one assignment in a class. It takes three times, but the workload would be less if I spent a lot of time invested in doing a quality job the first time, rather than a shoddy job to get through it, and then fixing, fixing, fixing. And I wanted to have a good reputation. I mean, that was of course. just something important to me. So, yes, it was challenging, very much so. Now, were you doing something with your dissertation work that you think has informed your practice as a teacher? Good question. Probably I mean, mm, not so much. Mm -hmm. In part, I, I'm like most many of us, I, I, needed to, I needed to finish and be done. My um, advisor, while wonderful, my dissertation advisor, wonderful guy, um, wasn't doing a lot of research of his own. That, uh. was, that was a hole, a weakness. Yes. But at least I didn't have to do something because I chose Temple out of convenience, something I didn't agree with or believe in. Uh -huh. So I, uh, I, I was sitting at a at national convention and he said, you know, that, that cup stacking, which is now known as sports stacking, is really, is, is neat. He, he, was, he thought that was cool and I, I did not. So I found a way to, he kept bringing it up, bringing it up, and I, I said, okay, well, it's apparent this is what I'm going to be studying. So I thought, <laughs> I have to find meaning in this. Yes. And I was not into motor development and motor learning, so that piece was not an option for me to study. So the brain-based research that is what we call it now was kind of a, a revisit of some of the work that was done in the 60s in terms of um, cross-brain development, um, crawling, those kind of uh -huh. things. And a lot of that research that shows up in the physical education genre was debunked. And I thought, wow, why are we, why are we, why are we bringing this back? Yeah. So do we know more now? So, because cup stacking requires both hands, which requires crossing the corpus callosum, I thought, okay, I wonder if there's any carryover to something. So I uh, studied reading comprehension in second grade students and fifth grade students. And I had a control group. They, uh, they did not get cup stacking, and the uh, research group did. So, and? interestingly, there was no uh, significant no significance with the second grade students, but there was with the fifth grade students. Hmm. However, I have to say that the, the group that had cup stacking had a teacher who was in his 31st year, uh -huh. and the control group had a teacher who was brand new, it was her first year. Uh -huh. So we have no idea if it had anything to do with cup stacking at all. But I did finish that part of my life, and I was able to um, um, move into a new level of comfort with that behind me. Yep. And that's very very important to be able to be effective. Yes, absolutely. Right. Yeah, so I, I'm, I really enjoy my work here. I, I feel that um, this institution, um, well, when I got the job, all of a sudden everybody heard of Towson. 
I, I knew of Towson. The last time I had been here was my sophomore year to play field hockey, and I just remember it was such an awful experience. We were playing so poorly the first half, my coach made us do sprints on the field at halftime. That was my <laughs> knowledge of Towson at that time, Towson State. So everyone had heard of Towson University that I knew, and they, they a lot knew that this program has an excellent reputation for physical education, and I thought, wow, what a bonus for me. I'm just grateful to have a job. So got here, found that the program is big, has a variety of folks, um, uh, uh, good quality folks who are, are, are leaving our program and doing a super job. And I can say that firsthand because every couple semesters I request an opportunity or part of my workload to supervise student teachers. Uh -huh. I feel like that's a um, very important thing to be cognizant about what I'm doing in my classroom at the, at the phase two level, the methods. Because if, if I'm seeing a disconnect with one student, it's, hmm, is that, is mm -hmm. that the student or is it me? So I think that's really, really valuable. So I'm, I'm seeing effective teachers and uh, I'm, I'm working with our graduates as mentors who are doing a phenomenal job. So it's, it's really, I'm really at a spot because I've been here enough, long enough, uh -huh. to see that turnover yes. and feel uh, proud of it. So mm -hmm. yes, I'm, I'm really excited about that. Well, I don't think there's anything better or more rewarding than to see the, the students that you taught doing a wonderful job at what you've prepared them to do. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's yeah. gratification. It is. And, you know, some of the things that um, um, are unsettling for all of us is, you know, the, the sea change toward assessment, unsettling in part because the expectations have increased in terms of the commitment to collecting data, not just grading a paper, but recording it. And then um, not recording the grade, but recording how they did on each portion of the assignment. So you can track, well, okay, there's a unit plan, so it's a good quality one, but the assessment's really weak. Uh -huh. So they need help with assessment, uh -huh. even though they got a good grade on it. So, so all of that taken into consideration, really nickel and dimes time. But what I am, uh, especially tickled by is that our graduates are doing the things that can't be assessed, nobody cares to assess if we could, um, that, that make a difference. They're building relationships with students and making connections and keeping an eye on them in terms of um, letting them know that they, they care about them, even if, it's, even if they aren't excellent in, in this content area of physical education. And I think some of those things really make a difference in terms of K-12 students graduating to be happy, productive people in society. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And physically active. And physically people. active, yes. Yes, that's a, a bonus on top of it all. Um, where are you, where are you going now? I mean, this, do you have any, <laughs> do you have any professional goals that you have, haven't met at Towson that you would like to be involved in? Funny you should ask. Um, I, I was um, at, at my elementary school for 11 years. Uh -huh. I'm in my 11th year now. Uh -huh. And I, I, about a year ago, started thinking, hmm, am I gonna, is this what I'm going to do for the rest of my life? Uh -huh. And not because I'm dissatisfied, but just because I get itchy and, uh -huh. and, and kind of wonder, OK, what else, what else, what uh -huh. else? And, um, I spent some time thinking about what else I might do uh -huh. and pretty much focused in academia. I wasn't thinking about uh, leaving education. And um, I kind of collected my thoughts mm -hmm. about what I do, had a little bit of change of um, focus and, and attitude about um, the impact I can make, mm -hmm. especially with the things that can't be measured don't show up on my workload or my annual report about graduating happy, competent, effective novice teachers. Uh -huh. And that that is what brings me joy and it's paying the bills. So uh -huh. I have no thoughts about doing anything other than hopefully making full professor someday. Uh -huh. Associate now. So yes. yeah, I, I don't really um, see myself going somewhere else uh -huh. to do this work. I, I think Towson um, really has the opportunity to um, grasp what has been mentioned about this institution as the, the state school for teacher education, uh -huh. teacher preparation. 
I, th I think that there's a truth in that. And not only because of the history of being a state normal school, but because of the um, influence we have around the state with our mm -hmm. graduates. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I also think that the state schools, um, I, I kind of feel bad for them because there's the trend of wanting to be this research one institution and, and being this everything institution and we're only ever going to be second in that because we aren't that. Right. So I think adopting this um, approach toward being the best teacher preparation institute is, is, is a great fit. And it is the historical mm -hmm. uh, underpinning of what, of what we do. So it's, it's exciting. And I've had wonderful experiences in the College of Education. I feel very, very comfortable when I come to, uh, across campus to the College of Education. There is um, a warmth and an acceptance and um, upstanding expectations and follow through on all things that matter. So that's, that's wonderful. Yes. Very nice. Um, is there anything that we've forgotten that you want to mention about your career or teacher education at Towson? I think you've given us a lot of good information and insight oh, into thanks. things. Thank you. We um, always, you no, were going to say, go uh, no, and I don't want this to end before um, our final question is always, what, would, what kind of wisdom would you share? You've had a decade in public education and um, K-12 level and a decade in higher ed. What would you say to someone who's considering a career in teaching? Make sure you like children. It seems so obvious, but I guess from the perspective I have in physical education is this. Most, most students when I was an undergrad and now choose physical education because they love sport. Aha. Uh -huh and or want to coach and this is a good fit and that's that's still happening and secondary to that is oh yeah i'm gonna work with kids all day okay but because <laughs> the content is 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 movement and, and activity um there's a belief that it's a good fit and um until you really think about the fact that you have you know, a typical class schedule, 45 minutes, kids are coming in the door and out the door. And you might have five minutes between classes, you might even have 10 minutes to go to the bathroom or talk to a colleague, but you are, you are working with children or, or teenagers all day long. And if you don't like them, or at least one of those levels, it's not a good fit at all. And I, I've, I've worked with some teachers who appear not to like kids, and they know it. They can't express it or communicate it when they're in, in, say, third grade, but they know it, and it affects every, everything. It affects them, so, yeah, that seems obvious, but in physical education, I, I, I wonder if that's true in, say, art and music, too. If you love art, you love music, and mm -hmm. you forget about you're spending this mm -hmm. time with kids, so that's all I have. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you for your time. I appreciate this. This oh, is a wonderful this, Yeah, this is wonderful. And how nice that we have a representative from physical education. Thanks for having me and, and us, our content area. Appreciate yeah, it. Absolutely.